And then we're going to move on to the electronics. So in the 90s and the 80s and the 90s, we were starting to appreciate older things again. And we have these things which, um, like these old radios, you still find these quite a bit. And people still do like to buy these. All of these things though, like this here, we actually, I have one of these. We have one of these. Um, I think for a while we had one of these, but it broke. We never had one of these, but all of these have a tape deck. So like for this one, you can see it. It's got a tape deck in the side. This one, this part flips down right here and you put a tape deck right there. And then this one, this part flips down right here and you put a tape deck. And this one, let's see, it shows classic look radios, have high quality electronics, and all include a built-in cassette player. Oh, so the cassette player is right there on the face. So now when I'm out shopping, thrifting with my sister, we always look at things. And if we know that it's like a reproduction of something, we always say, does it have a tape deck in the side? Or she'll look at something, my sister will look at something and go, oh, look at that. And I'll go, eh, it's got a tape deck in the side. It might not actually have a tape deck in the side, but we know that means it's a reproduction. <laughs> and then these are cool. This is a cool pink phone alarm clock radio. And then you have, this was pretty cool when I first got one of these because you can wake up to whatever songs you want. It doesn't have to be the radio. And then we've got like your Walkman and your boom boxes. This boom box has a TV. What? And you got your pink ones. Mine sort of look like this, where um, you could lift the speakers off on the sides, but it was not a Panasonic. It was like a cheap Sonic. And then, you know, eventually you had to have one of these because you had to have um, access to your record player and a dual cassette, you know, for making the mixtapes. And then something... A system like this was like aspirational. Like someday, when I move out of my parents' house, I'm going to spend $800 on a stereo system. And now it's like people don't even have a radio in their house. They just have their phone, you know? Okay. These TVs, like this is what I remember from my childhood. And this is like... 1990, you're getting to the end of this, like, wood TV era. Because, you know, you could buy these in, like, the 60s and the 70s. But this TV, that's a 25-inch TV. Think of the size of the TV you probably have in your living room right now. I have a 42-inch TV. This thing, but this cabinet for this TV is probably twice as big as the TV I have now. $649. But then these TVs are magical because they are on a swivel. So you can turn them one way or the other. So like if you have this in your living room and then you had open room to your dining room, you could just swivel the TV so you could watch TV while you ate dinner. Cool. If these are like $600 for these TVs. This one, the new Emerson 30 inch TV, 30 inch, $1,200. It has an, isn't that worth $1,200? And then of course you have your projection TVs that are $1,800. 
We never had a TV, I don't think, bigger than like 19 inch when I was growing up. We did always have this like wood grain on the side. We always bought our TVs from this store, this local store called Tom Peterson. And you would get things when you bought, like you would get a year of free video rentals because they had a video store. And then these are all-in-one TV VCRs. Check that out. 600 bucks though. And this one is a grand. Because it has a forehead VCR and a 27 inch TV. The problem was everybody I knew who ever had one of these. Like the TV would stop working. So then your VCR is no good. Or the VCR would stop working. You could still watch the TV if the VCR didn't work. But then you would have to have another VCR that would sit underneath this TV. Hooked up to this TV so it could work. <laughs> Right? Did you have that experience too? This is what, like, my sister and I had in our bedroom as one of these. I don't think it was 12 inch though. I think it was 9 inch. And then you've got your VCRs, which are $500 and $600 and $400. And your camcorders. Start up your YouTube channel. So this one here. This is like a big one that like sat up on your shoulder. Right? These are big ones. Then they have these little ones too. But that's $1,100. And this one is We gotta get moving on here. Look at Garfield. And then you've got louvers for the back window of your car, of course. Who didn't have those on their Trans Am? Then we're gonna skip over a whole bunch of like appliances and stuff because the boring. And these bedroom sets. Do you remember these? These get were really popular in like the late 90s or the late 80s and the mid 90s these like rolled metal beds the metal was so thin and hollow and it was scary to like get on the top or like sleep down here below somebody up there i always thought oh it's gonna fall apart there's no way this thing doesn't fall apart and then day beds. Everyone was loving their day beds in 1990. But now if you look at it, it looks just like a crib for a bigger kid. <laughs> Doesn't it? Don't they look like cribs? You paid probably 50 bucks to 120 bucks for a good answering machine, right? Because most of us didn't have cell phones back then. And so if we weren't home, Someone had to leave a message. Do you guys remember those commercials? You could buy that cassette that had all the funny, like, answering machine messages on it. We made, I remember we made a lot of our own kind of goofy answering machine messages. And you could get some of these cool phones in different colors. And if you were lucky, you had a really long cord so you could walk from one room to the other. But then, of course, that cord would get all tangled and be a mess. Look at this pink phone. And I bet it lights up. And then, of course, you have the Novotel transportable cellular phone. Look at that thing. Portable battery pack with AC chargers, 150 bucks. The phone itself is $400, which seems like a bargain for a new phone these days. Some people pay upwards of $1,000. But then you have this handheld cellular phone. Then you have this whole bag with your battery pack and whatever that you had to take with you. I wonder how much this sucker weighed. 
So this one looks smaller, but I feel like you have to have it attached to this bag. So it's not actually smaller. And of course we've got some fax machines and then the typewriters. And some of these have like actual computer screens on them, which in 1990, we weren't that far from having regular PCs. I mean, in, people had um, computers with disk drives and stuff, but um, of course we didn't have any connection to the internet or anything like that. Not yet in 1990, but we weren't too far. Smith Corona. It's basically a typewriter with a monitor. And then look at this one. Talk about some antiquated electronics. That typewriter had like a printer. And it had, well, this is a whole computer. Look, there's a disk drive there. Let's see, this is more than a word processor. Optional spreadsheet software practically turns into a small computer. Practically, hmm. BM PC compatible XT computers, $800, $1,000. This one's $1,500, this one's $1,700. And let's see the specs on this, or 1800. Sixteen megahertz, fast, forty megabyte disk capacity, full one megabyte of internal memory. Yeah, one <laughs> megabyte of internal memory. In 1990 now I got a computer in 1990 I want to say the end of 92 or 93 I saved up for a long time and I spent a thousand dollars on that computer and I was in high school then and it had two megabytes of internal memory two <laughs> And then next we're going to look at bathrooms because that's a logical next step, right? Computers to bathrooms. Look at all of these colorful accessories for your bathroom. These are fun. You had these bathrooms. Okay. I didn't really know anyone when I was a kid who had carpet in their bathroom, but I've been into so many like different estate sales, you know, where you go into someone's house and you go into the bathroom that has carpet and it's like still damp and it smells terrible in there because carpet in a bathroom is such a bad idea. It's such a bad idea. Look at that. It just grosses me out because I've been into so many houses where they have carpet in the bathroom and it's always just so gross. So gross. And then this is the baby room stuff. So you have some of the Disney babies. And they had all kinds of stuff in the Disney babies realm. As they do now. But you have Baby Mickey's band, and then it's like all band themed, which is interesting. So now we're moving into the bedding, which can be the fun part. You have Mickey and Minnie and Donald and Daisy. That's a really cute bedding set. I don't think I've ever seen those sheets. And then we have Sesame Street. You've got Big Bird and Bert and Ernie and Mr. Snuffleupagus. So fun. And then we have the Ninja Turtles, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. And this one is Patch the Dog. I don't know who that is. Probably just a 
made up JC Penny character. But we got some fun dinosaurs. And then just like generic girls and or boys. And there's this cute Holly Hobby, which is kind of interesting because in 1990, there wasn't a lot of Holly Hobby stuff. I'm guessing that really didn't sell that well. We've got football, where you didn't buy the team, you just bought like general football merchandise and it had all the teams listed on it. And you got kind of the same thing with baseball and basketball. And probably if you lived in Canada, hockey. And this is like a fun, geometric, probably teenage, preteen to teenage girl bedroom. Where she's got her Reeboks down there. Oh no, those are Adidas. Never mind. <laughs> and another baseball one. And then this is Peanuts. Loopy and Charlie Brown and the gang. That's a cute set. I don't think I've ever seen those either. Bebop Around the Clock. In the 80s, which this is 1990, sure, but in the 80s, we were real big into the 50s. So, <laughs> doesn't surprise me at all that they would have like a 50s style. In fact, I'm kind of surprised my sister didn't have that. And then Batman. They always show these on like full size or queen size beds, but you hardly ever find these sheets in those sizes. If you do, those can be actually worth a good amount of money in the bigger sizes because they're a lot harder to find. Um, okay guys, I think that is the last one that I wanted to show you from this catalog. There's a lot of other stuff in this catalog. It's uh, more like this. <laughs> Not as fun. But this was a cool catalog. There was a lot of fun stuff in it. Thanks for watching, guys. Make sure to comment, like, and subscribe. Tell me what your favorite thing was from the JCPenney Fall and Winter 1990 catalog. Did you have any of the stuff that I showed you? And you can also find me on... Instagram. You can go to my blog, toy-addict.com. And if you want to support the channel, you can go over to Patreon and support the channel for as little as $1 a month. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye. Bye.